Very good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha television. My name is Ashwarya Kapoor. Well, a lot's making news this morning. Let us start with the headlines. Goods and services tax, a great example of cooperative federalism, says Prime Minister Modi. In monthly radio address, Man Ki Baat says enthusiasm of honest people behind its success. Forty-third anniversary of emergency today. Vice President Naidu terms it a too devastating an experience to be forgotten. BJP to mark a black day today. Union Minister Arun Jaitley says Indira Gandhi turned democracy into constitutional dictatorship. Two Lashkar-e Taiba militants killed in encounter with security forces in Kulwam in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. One militant surrenders. Jammu and Kashmir police to intensify outreach program to persuade militants to give up arms and join mainstream. England record their biggest ever football World Cup win, thrash Panama 6-1. Harry Kane's a hat trick makes him a leading goal scorer in tournament. Japan and Senegal well placed to reach the knockout stage with a draw on Sunday. Colombia crushed Poland 3-0. And India continue winning streak at the Champions Hockey Tournament in the Netherlands. The beat Argentina 2-1 in their second round robin match. A top story this Monday morning. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the goods and services tax is a great example of cooperative federalism. Addressing the country in his monthly radio address, Man Ki Baat, the Prime Minister said that as the tax reform mean nears completion of for one year, its success can be attributed to the enthusiasm of the honest people of the country who adopted it. The Prime Minister also referred to the recently concluded Yoga Day celebrations globally. He said it presented the rarest of sights and the world appe appeared as one entity. Now, speaking on the 100 years of uh, the Jallianwala Bagh incidents uh, that will be marked next year, the Prime Minister said that the message from it is that violence and cruelty can never solve any problem. He also remembered the contribution of uh, Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee, the first Industries Minister of India, for laying a strong foundation for the country's industrial development. The Prime Minister also lauded the contribution of a great saints towards transforming our society. जीएसटी को एक साल पूरा होने वाला है वन नेशन वन टैक्स देश के लोगों का सपना था वो आज हकीकत में बदल चुका है जीएसटी कोऑपरेटिव फेडरलिज्म का एक बेहतरीन उदाहरण है जहां सभी राज्यों ने मिलकर देश हित में फैसला लिया और तब जाकर देश में इतना बड़ा टैक्स रिफॉर्म लागू हो सका योग सभी सीमाओं को तोड़कर जोड़ने का काम करता है सैकड़ों देशों के हजारों ईसाई लोगों ने जाति धर्म क्षेत्र रंग या लिंग हर प्रकार के भेद से परे जाकर इस अवसर को एक बहुत बड़ा उत्सव बना दिया मैं मानता हूं कि आज योग एक वेलनेस रिवॉल्यूशन का काम कर रहा है डॉक्टर श्यामा प्रसाद मुखर्जी भारत के पहले उद्योग मंत्री रहे और एक अर्थ में कहें तो उन्होंने भारत का औद्योगिक विकास का मजबूत शिलान्यास किया था हम हमेशा डॉक्टर श्यामा प्रसाद मुखर्जी के एकता के संदेश को याद रखें 2019 में जलियावाला बाग की उस भयावह घटना के भी 100 साल पूरे हो रहे हैं जिसने पूरी मानवता को शर्मसार कर दिया था लेकिन इस घटना ने जो अमर संदेश दिया उसे हम हमेशा याद रखें कि हिंसा और क्रूरता से कभी किसी समस्या का समाधान नहीं किया जा सकता जीत हमेशा शांति और अहिंसा की होती है एंड आफ्टर गुरुग्राम एंड फरीदाबाद थर्ड सेक्शन ऑफ द मेट्रो कनेक्टिंग डेली टू नेबरिंग स्टेट ऑफ हरियाणा वॉज इनोग्रेटेड ऑन संडे 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the 11.2 km long fully elevated Munka Bahadur Garh corridor through video conferencing yesterday and speaking on the occasion the Prime Minister said that his government's priority is to build a convenient comfortable and affordable urban transport systems in the country he said that infrastructure development opens up new opportunities for business and jobs he also termed uh, the metro systems as an example of cooperative federalism he also added that the center wants to boost uh, make in india by designing metro coaches in our country he informed that now india is also helping other nations uh, design coaches for their metro system union urban affairs minister hardeep singh puri and haryana chief minister manohar lal khattar were also present at the spot on the occasion जितना ज्यादा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर मजबूत होगा संपर्क सुगम होगा जितना ज्यादा ट्रांसपोर्ट के अलग अलग माध्यम एक दूसरे को सपोर्ट करेंगे उतना ही लोगों का जीवन आसान बनेगा व्यापार के नए अवसर खुलेंगे रोजगार के नए अवसर उपलब्ध होंगे साथियों सरकार के इन प्रयासों में सामान्य जन आप सभी की सक्रिय भागीदारी के बिना संभव नहीं होता है भारत दुनिया के कई देशों को मेट्रो के कोच की सप्लाई करने के लिए तैयार हो रहा है न सिर्फ अंतर्राष्ट्रीय संबंध बल्कि कोऑपरेटिव फेडरलिज्म कैसे काम करता है उसका भी मेट्रो एक जीता जागता सबूत है आज देश के जिन जिन राज्यों में भी मेट्रो बन रही हैं वहां केंद्र और राज्य सरकारों की सक्रिय भागीदारी से बन रही है ऑन टू समाधि न्यूज नाउ द भारतीय जनता पार्टी विल ऑब्जर्व अ ब्लैक डे टुडे टू मार्क द 43rd एनिवर्सरी ऑफ द 1975 इमरजेंसी 25th ऑफ जून मार्क्स द डे व्हेन अ फॉर्मर प्राइम मिनिस्टर इंदिरा गांधी डिक्लेयर्ड अ स्टेट ऑफ इमरजेंसी इन द कंट्री The party plans to hold press conferences across the country to highlight how this was the darkest period of independent India. Then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had imposed emergency in the country on 25th of June 1975 after the Allahabad High Court and subsequently the Supreme Court had found her election to the Lok Sabha as null and void. It was formally proclaimed by the then President Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed The emergency was in effect from 25th of June 1975 until its withdrawal on 21st of March 1977. Meanwhile, BJP President Amit Shah will visit his home state Gujarat to participate in a program to mark the day in Ahmedabad that will be observed as Black Day. BJP President Amit Shah will also attend the second day of the two-day Chintan Shivar of the party. The purpose of the session is to prepare a road map for the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. Meanwhile, Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu has termed emergency as too devastating an experience to be forgotten. In an article in a leading daily, the Vice President said that for 21 months Indian citizens were denied fundamental rights. He said that the Constitution of India was amended preventing the courts from scrutinizing any such amendments. In effect, the government could do anything with the sacred constitution and with the lives and liberties of the people. If other said that there is a need to keep recalling those uh, harrowing experiences from time to time as people are entitled to certain freedoms the vice president has written in detail about his experience behind bars for over 1 months which proved to be the turning point of his life he said that the days gave him a clear perspective of the people of uh, the people as well as the power the politics and the country It also strengthened his resolve to defend democracy and respect the will and the rights of the citizens with respect to basic freedom. And in a Facebook post titled The Emergency Revisited, Union Minister Arun Jaitley wrote that more than 4 decades ago the government led by the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi had imposed a phony emergency turning democracy into a constitutional dictatorship. Indira Gandhi imposed emergency on 25th of June 1975 on account of internal disturbances suspending a key fundamental rights guaranteed under the constitution to every citizen. 
Jaitley further said that uh, he became the first Satyagrahi against Indira Gandhi government's draconian move and was lodged in Tihar jail for organizing a protest meeting on 26th of June 1975. On the midnight of uh, 25th to 26th of June 1975, several prominent political leaders of the opposition parties were arrested. He also said that during the decades uh, 1960s and the 70s, the average growth rate of GDP had only been 3.5%. And inflation in 1974 had touched a staggering 20.2% and had reached 25.2% in 1975. Labour laws were made more stringent and these led to near economic collapse in the country. So today marks the 43rd anniversary of the emergency that dented the democracy for about two years in our country during 1975 to 1977. Now, this questionable episode in post-independent India raised several issues about individual freedoms and their importance besides shaking the conscience of the nation. To talk about that uh, darkest hour of India's democracy, we have with us uh, Sri Surya Prakash, Chairman of uh, Prasar Bharti, who chronicled the events of that period in a book, the Hindi, Kannad, Telugu and Gujarati editions of the book, The Emergency, Indian Democracy's Darkest Hour will be released today. Let's first try and put into perspective and understand what made you write this book in the first place. Uh, one, a vibrant democracy became a dictatorship for 19, 21 months. And uh, that's the most terrible thing that can happen to any democracy. I was with the Indian Express in the 1970s uh, in Bangalore. And uh, we had that effect of the emergency in terms of censorship, pre-censorship. My own personal experiences, which were quite terrible in the sense that we had an Inspector General Police was appointed as the Chief Censor in Karnataka. And he thereby virtually became my Chief Editor. Can you imagine a man in uniform correcting the copies that we write? Uh, and so we would go during the day and, uh, you know, on our reporting assignments, come back, editorials, our reports, everything would go to the Inspector General Police Office. Was that the case everywhere, sir? No, in every state they had a chief censor. They had different kinds of people. This was the biggest, this was a way of humiliating the free press, of humiliating Indian Express. So we were subjected to pre-censorship. And the Inspector General of Police became the Chief Censor. He had a battery of uh, police inspectors and some information department guys. Can you imagine police inspectors sitting and deciding what will go into print? Meanwhile, news from Jammu and Kashmir now. Two Lashkar-e Toiba militants were killed and another militant surrendered in an encounter with the security forces in Kashmir on Sunday. A joint team of Jammu and Kashmir police, the army and the CRPF carried out the encounter operations in Kulgam district of South Kashmir ahead of the annual Amarnath pilgrimage. Now, among the two terrorists killed were Shakur Ahmeddar, a self-proclaimed commander of the lashkar e -Toyba. And this is the third major encounter since the centre revoked the ceasefire in Kashmir after Ramzan. Meanwhile, a civilian was uh, killed in the firing as uh, people came out uh, in protest against the security forces near the encounter site. Kulgam area a uh, specific input pe operation launch hua. Usme two top Lashkar-e Toiba ke saath bawastha rakhne wale terrorist maare gaye hain. Unme Shakur Dar, a division commander Lashkar-e Toiba ka, wo maara gaya hai. Ek jo uh, एक बंदा जो है वो अंदर रह गया था फॉलो किया गया जब उसने आर्म्स ले डाउन किया तो सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस ने वो ड्रिल फॉलो करते हुए उसको हिरासत में लिया गया मीनवाइल कंसर्न व्हेन एन अनयूजुअल राइज इन द द नंबर ऑफ पीपल जॉइनिंग द रैंक्स ऑफ मिलिटेंट्स द जम्मू एंड कश्मीर पुलिस हैज डिसाइडेड टू इंटेंसिफाई इट्स आउटरीच प्रोग्राम टू परसुएड देम थ्रू देयर फैमिलीज टू ले डाउन वेपन्स एंड जॉइन द मेन स्ट्रीम the police are reaching out to the families of the newly recruited militants and asking them to appeal to their boards to return home after shunning guns. Now, according to JNK police, over 80 people, some of them with the postgraduate degrees, have joined the ranks of militants in Kashmir Valley this year. 
There is a trend uh, now of a highly educated men joining militancy in Kashmir. The youth's joining militancy has uh, picked up after the killing of 21-year-old Hizbul Mujahideen terrorist Burhan Wani in an encounter with the security forces on 8th of July 2016. In 2017, 127 young men joined militancy, which is a record since 2010. And in breakfast news, we'll take a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back after the break. Uh, let's get you all the weather updates. And the central and north parts of India are all set to receive pre-monsoon showers uh, this week as per the Indian Met Department. The Met Department has forecast monsoon activity to steadily advance in the next two days across central India, bringing some relief from the rising temperatures in the region. Now, conditions are favourable for our uh, pre-monsoon thunderstorm activity over uh, parts of northwest India in the next uh, 24 hours. And the monsoon is expected to arrive in the national capital on 29th of June. Meanwhile, heavy to very heavy rain is also very likely in parts of northeast of the country, Odisha, West Bengal, Maharashtra and Gujarat in the next 48 hours. The IMD has also warned of thunderstorms accompanied with squall and hail very likely in parts of Uttarakhand. Our top international focus now, the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has won the majority of votes in Sunday's high-stakes election in the country, according to the ele election officials there. The chief of the election authority said that the president received the absolute majority of all the valid votes, but he gave no further details. Meanwhile, a state media reports put Erdogan on 53% of votes, with the 99% of the votes counted and his uh, closest rival, Muharrem Insi, on 31%. The opposition has yet to officially concede, but said that it would continue its uh, democratic fight, whatever the result. Erdogan later waved to the cheering, uh, flag-waving supporters from the top of a bus in Istanbul. Remember, Turkey held a Sunday's election under a state of emergency, which was declared after a failed military coup in July 2016. The result means that Erdogan has now survived the most serious challenge yet to his political dominance and he has tightened his grip on the nation that he has ruled for 15 long years. Sonra Cumhurbaşkanı ile ve meclisi ile bizim için daha çok çalışma zamanıdır. Artık Seçim döneminde yaşanan tartışmaları, gerginlikleri, kırgınlıkları geride bırakıp ülkemizin geleceğine yoğunlaşma zamanıdır. Milletimizden aldığımız bu destekle sınırlarımız içinde ve dışında ülkemizi terör örgütleri vasıtasıyla tedip etmeye çalışanlara cevabımızı çok daha güçlü bir şekilde vermeyi sürdüreceğiz. Anne also, 86 people were killed in an attack by suspected uh, nomadic herders against uh, farming communities in uh, central Nigeria yesterday. State Police Commissioner told uh, the local reporters that uh, six people were also injured and 50 houses were razed during the clash. An immediate uh, curfew was imposed in several areas uh, to avoid breakdown in law and order. Violence on grounds of religion and political allegiances is Nigeria's major security concern. Boko Haram Islamist insurgency has left at least 20,000 people dead since 2009. Let's now get you all the action from the FIFA World Cup in Russia. Well, on Sunday, England uh, recorded their biggest ever World Cup win by thrashing an ill-disciplined Panama 6-1 on Sunday to break, breeze through the, to the knockout stage after two games. A hat-trick uh, from captain Harry Kane, uh, two from John Stones and a beauty from Lingard completed uh, the crushing victory. Now, with this, uh, Kane uh, also becomes uh, the leading scorer in the tournament with five goals. And for Lingard, it was his uh, first ever in an England shirt. But the result also confirmed Belgium's qualification for the knockout stage and it also means that Panama now exits the tournament alongside Tunisia. 
Speaking about the second match, well, the Japan Senegal match ended in a two all draw. The two teams uh, now remain well placed to reach uh, the knockout stage. Japan and Senegal have four points after the two games. Despite another point, Senegal will be disappointed that they could not follow up their 2 1 win over Poland last week by becoming the first African side to win two group games since Ghana in 2006. And in the third match on Sunday, Colombia beat Poland 3 0, ending Poland's uh, hopes of reaching the last 16. Radamir Pacado scored his uh, first World Cup goal, and Jerry Mina then uh, nodded in James Rodriguez's uh, cross shortly before half time to put the South Americans ahead. It was a much improved performance by Colombia following their disappointing 2 1 uh, defeat by Japan in their Group H opener. And it will definitely give their fans hope that they can at least match their run to the quarterfinals in 2014. And in contrast, this was another disappointing display by Poland, who lost to Senegal in their group opener. And uh, day 12 of uh, the FIFA World Cup today will see four encounters. Uh, it is Russia versus Uruguay in Group A match at 7:30 p.m. Saudi Arabia will take on Egypt, uh, also in. Uh, Group A at 7.30 p.m. And in first of the two Group B matches, Spain will take on Morocco at 11.30 p.m. And Iran and Portugal will clash at 11.30 p.m. All right, Jyoti Anburet, a former national football player, is now joining us in the studio. A very good morning, Ms. Buret. Of course, England into the last 16 of the World Cup after this record-breaking win over Panama that we saw yesterday. Mm -hmm. Basically, mauling the Minos Panama. But the question is, can the three Lions continue this momentum against Belgium and then also to, into the last 16? Um, I think it was important for England to win by such a big margin yesterday. And um, because, you know, they are going to want to top this pool. And heading into the game against Belgium uh, with equal goal difference now, uh, it'll be very interesting to see who tops that pool. I think England had it easy yesterday against Panama, but they're not going to have it that easy against Belgium. Absolutely. Great challenge ahead for them. Uh, speaking about the next match, well, it ended in a draw, but I guess it was no less uh, entertaining because, you know, Japan and San Senegal both, uh, you know, drawing a two all in the Group H uh, clash. How do you look at that match? Oh, it was a thrilling encounter. Very close. Uh, both teams uh, really going for it. Senegal you know, showing their strength and their physicality and Japan really showing us some skill and grit. And it was, it was nail-biting, but uh, I think both teams will be happy with that draw because I think both teams deserved it. Absolutely, both will be happy and both are also locked at the top of a group eight. Speaking about uh, Colombia and Poland, of course, uh, dominant uh, Colombia ending uh, Poland's uh, hope of last 16. Uh, how do you look at that match? I think Colombia played really well. They deserved the 3-0 victory. I think getting Hamez back in the side really proved to be the difference. They looked a different team than they did in their first game. Um, and Poland were just outplayed yesterday. And Poland is also the now first European team really to be knocked out of uh, Russia 2018. And speaking about the matches that are slated uh, for today, of course, the Uruguay facing off against host nation Russia. Uh, that will be very interesting because Russia have, uh, you know, the way they are playing in this tournament, it's absolutely amazing. It is and it, this, this game is going to decide who tops the group and uh, Russia not going to have it as easy as they have in their first two games. Today is going to be their first real test. Mm. So it's going to be interesting to see but Uruguay have been under par this tournament. So um, it will be interesting to see if Russia can live up to how they've been playing for the last two games. Absolutely and it is very, very going to be especially interesting because Russia came into this World Cup as the lowest ranked team in this uh, World Cup. Now speaking about uh, the other match, uh, well, of course, uh, uh, we have uh, which other team? Are Portugal, you yes, uh, Saudi yeah. versus Egypt. Uh, of course, this is a dead rubber because uh, both these uh, team, you know, already out and they'll be playing for pride today. They will be playing for pride. I think Egypt will want to at least leave the competition with one win because, you know, they are a capable side and I don't think they've performed at that level. Hmm. But uh, both teams, of course, will want to win and leave this competition on a high. Absolutely. And uh, the third match is uh, Spain versus Morocco and Spain obviously would be desperate for points because Morocco is anyway playing for pride. 
Yes, I mean, uh, Spain is going to be uh, going for the win. They want to top the pool ahead of Portugal. Whereas Portugal is going to have it slightly more difficult because they're going up against Iran, who still have a chance of qualification. Hmm. So uh, I think Spain should be able to beat Morocco. But as we've seen, Morocco's defence is quite solid when it wants to be. All right. Uh, thank you so much. A very interesting match is slated for the day today as well. Thank you so much, Ms. Buret, for joining us and giving us all the perspective on that big story. And for all the in-depth analysis of all the day's matches with our experts in the studio, do watch our special daily show on the FIFA World Cup at 7 p.m. Now, it is a new show timing for our Football World Cup uh, coverage because uh, the match timings have also changed. Uh, the first one at 7.30 p.m. So don't forget to tune in. Let's get you some more sporting action. Well, India's turned to Olympic champions Argentina 2-1 to register their second consecutive uh, victory in the Champions Trophy hockey tournament uh, in Netherlands on Sunday. India scored both their goals in the second uh, quarter through Harman Preet Singh, who converted a penalty corner as well as Mandeep Singh. Now, one number two, Argentina's lone goal came uh, from the sticks of uh, Gonzalo Pilet, who scored uh, from uh, a set piece in the 30th minute. India are now unbeaten in the tournament, having mauled our rivals Pakistan 4-0 in their opening game of the tournament. And now India will take on world champions Australia in the next round-robin match on 27th of June. And after two straight victories, India will be looking to continue their good run at the Kabaddi Masters in Dubai when they take on Pakistan in their third Group A match today. Now, having won the previous matches against Pakistan and uh, newbies Kenya, the Indians' uh, spirits are on uh, high as uh, their uh, Raiders as well as the uh, defenders have made uh, look things uh, actually very easy on the mat. In the first game against Pakistan, uh, the Ajay Thakur-led Indian team started off uh, sensibly uh, pausing uh, and uh, at the right spots and gauging the weakness and the strength of the opponents in the initial moments uh, before thrashing them by notching up a tsunami of points. And the second game against Kenya also went the same way when Indian Raiders, uh, two of them, uh, namely uh, Deva Liga and uh, Goyat, along with the defenders, put Kenya on mat and won by also a huge margin. And with that, uh, we come to an end of this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day ahead.